So this charity thing happened yesterday. Uh, all the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom. And all that money goes to Dementia Research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money, and we help them do their thing. This is Gerard Khalil, well known online as The Completionist. Okay. For more than a decade, his YouTube series where he completes games 100% has been very successful and he has built a very large and respected brand. Good for Gerard him. is very well liked within the gaming community, mm -hmm. and I myself have been a fan of his YouTube content for many years. I'm sure I've seen a In couple 2018, of his videos. Gerard helped create the Indyland Charity Marathon. This is where indie developers get to come together oh. and showcase their games. It gave a spotlight to lesser known developers and it also raised money for a good cause. Good for All him. of the money raised by Indyland goes to the Open Hand Foundation, uh -huh. a non-profit organization that helps support dementia research. The Open Hand Foundation was founded by Gerard and his family in 2003, oh, after wow. Gerard's mother was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. Ooh, However, it didn't officially become a non-profit until 2014 That's after she unfortunately ago. passed away. Indyland has been quite successful in raising money for charity. Mm -hmm. They generally raise over $100,000 per year and according to their website have raised over 600,000. Wow. The marathons do well and often attract very popular figures in the gaming realm and even celebrities. That's great. From YouTube influencers to gaming developers and publishers, mm -hmm. many parties actively get involved to help raise money. According to their website, the Open Hand Foundation supports the University of California, San Francisco. And in 2020, Gerard said that Open Hand was one of the UCSF's main support partners. Uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main um, their main funding uh, support partners uh, going into all of this. Um, Beyond this, according to Gerard, Open Hand raises money for organizations all over the world. Well, it, well I mean, like, let me guess, people don't he, people don't get um, the money. My father, my brother, and I started a foundation called the Open Hand Foundation that raises money for dementia research and treatment for organizations all over the world. However, the truth is that since its inception in 2014, the Open Hand Foundation has not contributed a single cent to any organization. Why not? For the past 10 years, they have raised over $600,000 and it? it's all just sitting in their bank account. Despite So it's not even like they're raising the money and buying yachts? They're just putting it in a box? Well, what? Why? Open Hand saying the money goes to help fund research, and despite the fact that everyone believes their money is going to a worthwhile cause, this yeah. is simply not the case. Because Open Hand well, where is, a, is it going then? A non-profit, their tax filings are publicly available. Uh -oh. Since 2014, their yearly filings have all shown the same behavior. Uh -huh. For example, in 2022, they received $117,000 in contributions. They paid $11,000 in expenses, leaving them with $106,000 in excess revenue. This cash was then added to their existing stockpile of cash, which now totals $655,000. Wow. Every year since 2014, it's been the same. Money is received, some expenses are deducted, and the cash is just left in their account. Normal Only 10% spends on, uh, like, if it's 10,000 out of, like, 117, it's, like, around 10%. Like, that's actually very, very low administrative costs. So it's, like, it would make sense to me if they were trying to scam that they would have raised those administrative costs tremendously. No, it's a lot. No, it's not. It's very low for a charity. Um, you can actually look this up. Um, there, there's the information. Uh, charity money that goes to administration costs. I'm just going to look, and there's like a lot of research about this. Discover what percentage goes into your charity. So like, um, let's see if I can scroll down here. Uh, 98 cents. These are some of the best ones, right? And they're like 85. St. Jude's. Like it's a better ratio than St. Jude's. Nature Conservatory. Better ratio than Nature Conservatory. Uh, it's a tremendous success. And like that's what's so weird about this story that I've uh, th that I've been seeing is that like if they were trying to embezzle money and trying to like funnel money out of the charity to themselves. They could have doubled their administrative costs and nobody would have batted an eye. Nobody would think anything of it because that's still within like the reasonable amount. And this that's what's so confusing to me about this is that there isn't like it just doesn't seem like just a normal scam.
Normally in these filings, a non-profit is supposed to state where their profit goes. Obviously, if a charity raises uh -huh. money, they are supposed to give it to an organization. Naturally. However, this has never happened with the Open Hand Foundation. In 10 years of filings, uh -huh. they have not dispersed a single dollar to anyone. They wow. have kept everything for themselves. Why? This is obviously alarming. Their website clearly yeah. states they support the UCSF. And they have a quote from David Kessler, the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine, thanking them for their gift. But the interesting thing about David Kessler is that he was fired as the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine in 2007, seven years before Open Hand was even officially registered. What? I needed to find out what was happening. So I contacted Open Hand and asked them why they haven't made any contributions in the past 10 years. And this is the response I got, which was written by Jacques okay. Khalil. Gerard okay, Br all right, they got a response. Let's Brother. see what this is. They claim that before their official registration as a foundation, they donated body parts for research. A strange claim that I don't believe can be true of a charity. That's likely referring- Prior to our official registration as a foundation, we donated body parts for research and made financial contributions to an institution that, in our view, made sufficient progress in the fight against these debilitating- uh, no, I actually believe this because the odds are that the mother that passed away, because obviously it was made before then, could have, uh, you know, elected to have her body uh, given to science in some capacity or another. Uh, that, like, I think this logically makes sense, right? Yeah, the, the mother's brain or something like that. This is uh, she passed because she passed from dementia. So I actually think this could make sense based off of that because they said that they didn't register it as a charity until after she had passed away. So this logically would be what it is. So I actually believe the body parts component very well, but I don't think that this is any sort of an extension or any like this was a personal decision that was made by her and her family this didn't really have any this doesn't have to anything to do with like a business right or like a charity and entity or anything like that but yeah i do believe that's the case and a lot of people do that uh, a lot of people like donate their body to to uh to science or different parts of their body to science uh if they have a disease that's problematic into a private it's and true. personal matter within their family and would have it's nothing to do too. with open hand. They claim they made financial contributions to an institution that made insufficient progress. Essentially, open hand is claiming that because they made donations before they were registered in 2014, which we cannot confirm because it wasn't public at the time, this means that it is acceptable to not pass along any of the money the public has given them until they find someone they deem worthy. The obvious question arises. If they have been looking for a beneficiary since 2014, why has Gerard been claiming they support organizations across the world, including the UCSF and the Alzheimer's Association? That's the thing is like if he was just saying we're waiting for a place to donate the money to because we don't know where to donate it to. It's like that's kind of like a lot more plausible and reasonable if he just says that than if he goes and he says, yeah, this is something that like we're donating this money to these people, but then the people aren't donating the money or aren't getting the money. Like, it's one thing that you're saying you're raising the money for something, and it's another thing to say that you're giving the money to these people. Like, that's a specific thing to say, and it doesn't happen. Raising money for dementia research and honor my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working yep. with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more. Why is he claiming the money yeah. is actually given to people who know how to use it? And all that money goes to dementia research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money and we help them do their thing. Uh -huh. Why is he claiming they are helping the victims and even the families of people with dementia? Uh, guys, welcome to Indyland. For those of you who don't know what we're doing, we're raising money for dementia research and prevention, helping victims who not only have dementia, but the families of those around them. Why is Open Hand still claiming it supports the UCSF on its website? Mm -hmm. Open Hand assured me they have done nothing illegal, because if they had, they would have been caught by the IRS. However, I never mentioned... Should there be any irregularities or misuse of funds, agencies such as the Department of Justice would intervene? And that's the thing is like, I actually believe this part is that they're filing like, again, if they're trying to embezzle money, like they could have doubled, probably tripled their administrative costs and nobody would even say anything about it because that's like a 30% administrative cost for, um, for a charity is like 
it's not great, but it's not awful. Like, it's really not. There are tons of charities that, like, over half the money go towards administration. And people say, some people say they're scams, but a lot of people just keep donating to them. The legality in my original email. I'm not sure why they brought up the IRS, but this assumes the IRS is some kind of omnipresent being mm -hmm. that immediately detects fraud the moment it happens and intervenes. This notion is simply untrue. Many crimes, especially fraud, go undetected. And unless you do something especially egregious on your filings, nothing will be flagged to the IRS. In saying that, however, these filings don't seem to be done properly, and they aren't even signed, which is definitely a legal requirement. Um, I mean, these were obviously prepared by a, by a CPA. It's an electronic signature. Yeah, like, I e-sign all of my tax documents. So I don't know... Yeah, it's an e-signature. That, that's what I do, too, right? Like, because I, I, I file my taxes, or... But I file my taxes. I mean, the people that I work with do everything. And then I pay them money. And then they send me a, a, a thing. And then I fill it out. And I just click a button and I pay a lot of money. And so that's it. So I, I don't I don't even know if this would be on there. I don't know if the if the e-signature from a tax document that's signed electronically would be on the publicly available documents. I'm actually not sure about that because it would make sense that actually it wouldn't be. Because the e-signatures that are done are done and they're not actually your signature. It's just your name and cursive. So, mm, I don't think this is that suspicious yet. It's usually not on public records. Yeah. It doesn't show up. Yeah, I, I don't know that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't don't seem to be done properly and they aren't even signed which is yeah if they didn't sign these documents they would instantly get audited this clearly just isn't unsigned yeah i feel like yeah if you if you put something in and it wasn't signed yeah i bet they'd be immediately on your ass definitely a legal requirement but now that they brought it up, if the filings do show an accurate account mm -hmm. of what happened, I do think this is illegal and would be considered charity fraud. Generally, taking money by dishonest means is considered fraud. You just can't yeah. tell people to give you money under a false pretense. And you can't wait 10 years until you're caught before doing something with mm -hmm. it either. In this case, Open Hand lied for many years saying that it was funding organizations it wasn't. And it was using those lies in order to get money from the public. Open Hand finishes by saying they continue to search for a partnership that meets their standards and if i have any recommendations they will consider it i don't know why they are asking me for my input open hand has already been lying for 10 years saying that it's been going to the ucsf the alzheimer's association and other organizations across the world why not i think they should explain why it's not going to those people because like it's easy for them to say oh well you know we're waiting for something that's worthy of this money but why is this not worthy of the money not send it there. Open Hand has had 10 years to find somewhere to send the money to, and I'm sure there are plenty of acceptable organizations that would gladly welcome its contribution. Sure. Truthfully, I just don't buy their explanation. If they really were looking for someone to give it to, they would have been honest about that to the public. They wouldn't have lied and said they were giving it to someone they weren't. Yeah, Why I find that to be very misleading and weird that they said that they were gonna they were gonna give the money away. They said they even gave charity names. And then, like, this doesn't happen? That seems extremely sus. They're still doing fundraisers when they admit here, if you choose to believe them, they have no idea where that money will go. Mm -hmm. Why do they not ask the public where to send the money? It sure. is their money, after all. People have been donating their hard-earned money for 10 years. Yeah. They all believe their money is going to a good cause. People have been championing IndieLand for years, declaring they are fighting dementia. Gaming developers, YouTube influencers, celebrities have all donated their time, money, and effort to this event, sure. thinking it was doing something when it just wasn't. Sponsors have invested money and equipment into a charity that did nothing with the money. I responded to Open Hand hoping to get clarification on a few details and asking if they thought it was appropriate. Yeah, that's a great question. Why do you have UCSF listed as a benefactor on the website if Open Hand does not contribute to them? I feel like that's a pretty simple 
simple question like that. I, yeah, like, what is this? To continue to ask for money when they aren't contributing any of it. They yeah. reiterated they believe their behavior was legal and ethical. Apparently me taking issue with the fact they've lied for years and kept all of the money they have ever received is both unwarranted and unfounded. Cle uh, uh, legal and ethical standards implication to the contrary is baseless. I don't think they're being ethical. Um, I don't. Now, there is like a large spectrum of fraud, and I find this not to be on the extremely bad spectrum because the money hasn't been misused. Like, it's one thing to like take people's money and just not give it away, but it's another thing to take people's money and then spend it on something else. So if they haven't spent the money, like, I'm not ready to say like, okay, let's go, let, let's go burn the witch, right? But it's really, this is really bad. This is like one step away from that. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, it's definitely really bad. All I'm saying is I'm putting into perspective. Like, I think this is like an eight or a nine and not a 10. That that's it. And also like they, it is unethical. Here's why. Because you said you're going to donate the money to these charities. You connected yourself to these charities and these groups. And then the money didn't go there. Like, it's really not that complicated, is it? I, I don't I don't really think it is. I don't think they, they've proven it hasn't been misused yet. Tax documents don't prove the money. Um, uh, the, the account has the money, does it? Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it and see. It's 10 years of research money that could have been done and spent. Guys, guys, you are absolutely right that it's bad. The only thing that I'm saying is that it could be worse, and the way that it's not worse is confusing to me. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's very confusing to me that this is happening, and I feel like there's a piece of this puzzle that we don't fully have. And the piece of the puzzle could be that um, the guy running it had some sort of like weird problem and like, you know, his mom dying and it was like some like weird fucked up thing in his head. Like, and none of this excuses it, but like, I'm just looking for a reason. Like there's something that could have like, what is like, how does this make any sense? Clearly from these statements, Open Hand feels as though this is acceptable behavior from a Ten charity. Years, yeah. They closed by saying they do not intend to issue further public comments on these matters, confirming that from Open Hand's perspective, this isn't an issue worthy of their time or comment. The last thing I needed to do was to talk to Gerard and get his side yeah. of the story. And with the help of Muta from Some Ordinary Gamers, we set the up legend. a call. According to Gerard, he didn't find out the funds had not been forwarded to any organizations until 2022, and claims that since that time, he has been actively trying to find somewhere to send the money. I think he's lying. Uh, I do. I think that, I think that's, no, he's lying. Because 2022 was at least 11 months ago. Like, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I mean, like, streamers do charity donations all the time about this. Like, they're, no, this is weird. Like, how does it take like what are you waiting for like ah uh, dude this is so weird it's 11 months to 10 years no what i'm saying is that he said he just found out about it in 2022 so in the most generous estimation of time that would have been it would have been 11 months assuming that he learned about it on december 31st 2022 it still would have been 11 months so this is just is so weird And he kept making charities in 2023. Yeah. Just because their filings say there's money doesn't mean that there is money still there. They stole it and they didn't report it. Wow. That's a big accusation. I don't know about that. I think that's insane if they did that. That is insane. You weren't notified that the money was sitting there the whole time? I knew it was sitting there mm -hmm. at a certain point, and that's what m made me proactively go about it. Like, I was made aware in 2021 with the, the- No, I think he's lying because he just used two words that I don't like. I didn't like the fact that he used the word proactively, and I didn't like the, the, the fact that he used the word at some point. I think these are intentional words used to obfuscate what the truth is and what's really happening. I, I this is, listen guys, uh, here's a little bit of advice, all right? If you ever do any sort of business and you're doing something that you can't enforce legally, 
right? You're dealing with somebody from another country. You're buying or selling something that is illegal. Uh, you're doing something on the black market, etc. The moment that there is even a slight mishap, immediately call off the whole deal. Because a person acting in good faith would have never let that happen. And especially they would have never let you find out first. Like if somebody's late or they bring their friend or something like that, they would have asked you ahead of time and said, hey, I'm going to bring my friend. Is that okay? People always operate above the board. Yeah, we'll disclose it. Yes, exactly. Why would a person on a black market act in good faith? Trust and integrity is more important on the black market than it is normally because you have no external enforcement mechanism other than you like trying to like have revenge. That's why. So you have to have a reputation and like a certain level of trust because if you don't have that, people don't have a recourse to recouping their money. Like if you scam them, they can't go to the police. If you scam them, you, you sell them something that isn't what they bought, well, they can't do anything about that. Shit gets you shot? Well, it does, but it, it doesn't until it does, right? And, like, usually the people that are scammers and shit like that and that do this stuff, they fucked over dozens of people before they get theirs. And also, many times they never get in trouble and nothing ever happens. The money hadn't moved yet. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move it. That's and not cool. Did anyone... 2021, last year, 2022. Yeah, did anyone tell or, you... Wait, that, wait, that, what? And... Did anyone... 2021, last year, 2022. Yeah, did anyone tell or, you that the, the, the money was going somewhere before then? Were you being misled? No. No, no, no. No one told me anything. I was... I assumed that it was all going to a charity, and I, I assumed incorrectly. Whether or not you believe this will be up to you. However, I... Um, I just think he needs to donate the money. Just, just find a fucking charity, donate the money. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, just fucking stop this shit. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think you should... Like, I mean, should you go to jail? Like, if you committed a crime, yeah, of course you should go to jail. But, like... I don't know. I mean, like, this is just, it's just, this is so weird and stupid. Just donate the fucking money and move on. It's so weird. He's too high up to not know. It's irresponsible for him to not know. You're right. You're absolutely right. And he said he wasn't told. Nobody told me. It's again, you know, like uh, language. I think that usually the words that people use to make you think one thing are actually more useful in realizing what their real goals are than often the other words they use to explain what they really think. Like certain words that people use to me immediately tell me that they're a liar. It's neglect at best? Oh, at best. We'll note that even if he is telling the truth, despite learning this in 2022, his behavior did not change. In yeah. 2023, he continued to make claims that Open Hand was supporting the UCSF, the Alzheimer's Association, AFTD, and many more, a year after learning that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more, these statements were from just several weeks ago. Gerard has also been a director of Open Hand since 2014, so it would take a lot to convince me he didn't know what was happening with the money he was raising. Well, I also think that let's say he didn't know what was happening. I still think that it's grossly irresponsible for him to be running something and not even know what's happening with the money at all while simultaneously advertising it publicly to millions of people. Like, there's a certain level, like, listen, everybody makes mistakes. Oversights always happen. There are elements of mismanagement that happen all the time. And I think everybody can understand that. But, like, starting a charity and then not donating the money to what the charity is for, for almost 10 years, that's a really big mistake. That's a big fuck up. That's a big one, guys. Come on. 
Ask yourself this question. If you raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity, do you think you would be interested in where that money was going? Yeah. Would you at least check to see if the money was being sent? No matter the answer, you would still be completely responsible for what happened with that money. The most important question at this time is whether or not the money is still there. And Gerard assures us they still have the full amount of money and are looking to donate it as soon as possible. At this stage, we have no reason to believe this isn't the case. However, due to open hands part- No reason to believe this isn't the case. I mean, we also have no reason to believe it is. Like, I mean, that's really the truth, yeah. I mean, what the fuck is this? Dishonesty, I think we do need concrete proof of this donation when it happened. For sure. Unfortunately, given that the money hadn't been contributed for so many years, and any contribution done now is in the wake of this being uncovered, it's hard to know if this is simply a response to being caught, or if they truly were planning on donating the money at some point. Hopefully we get confirmation soon that all of the money Open Hand has ever received is sent to the organizations it was supposed to. That being- I think that, yeah, that's what I- I think that he should- he should just donate the money Money. This is what I would do if I was him. I think this is the smartest thing. This is the best thing to do. I think he should just donate the full amount, you know, tack on like, you know, 30 grand, 50 grand. Like you guys can afford it. You'll figure it out, uh, you know, for like inflation, etc. Just for sitting on a pile of money like smog for the last 10 years uh, for like inflation. Just like send, yeah, put in that money, donate the money, shut down your charity. And if you still want to raise money for a charity, do what I did. Like, I, I raise money for Ukraine. I raise money for Games for Love. And all of that money went directly to those charities. And you can work with different partners that, that like, Hassan did this recently, too. He raised money for, uh, what do you call it, uh, for uh, this place, Palestinians. I think he also raised money for Ukraine as well. And guess what happens for Gaza? Yeah. And so he raised over a million dollars and all uh, the Turkish earthquake. Yeah, I forgot about that one, too. And all of that money that he raised, Hassan never touched that money. Like there was never a point where like, oh, Hassan's going to take this money and buy another three million dollar house. Oh, man, I hate socialists. No, that's not what happened. Right. Do we know that? Yeah, we do. Because you can just look into the situation yourself. And uh, absolutely. And so anyway, and uh, yeah, he didn't hand count the money and, you know, hand it to each in, you know, displaced Palestinian. And so what happened there is that he put in that money. He donated that money directly to a charity, uh, the personal money that he donated. Right. But everything else went directly to the charity. He just simply facilitated and gave them the link on where to donate. Like, that's it. And like, I've done the same thing. And a lot of other people have too. So like if he still wants to raise money, I think his credibility for being able to run a charity himself is completely shot. Because if you look at it, so look at it from the best possible outcome, okay? This is my most generous outcome. The most generous outcome that I can give this is that he did this because he is so grossly incompetent and negligent at his job that he let the money sit there for nine years. Like, it is gross negligence at best. Now, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, it doesn't, but, like, I'm just saying, like, I would never trust this dude to give him money. Like, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Like, after what happened, I would not donate money to his charity. You can hate Hassan's politics, that denying the fact he donated money is insecure and loser behavior. As it's not about Hassan, I'm just using him as an example. Like, uh, I know, obviously, I say Hassan, and you have to, like... It's like a fucking Pavlovian dog response. Oh, no, 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 no. I have to say the thing now. Like, it's not, got nothing to do with the point. Like, it, it's literally, I'm just using it as an example of a person who used a charity that everybody knows about. Like, stop it, you fucking animals. Jesus Christ. Um, it, it's, it's so weird, man. People are trained, man. They're trained like little animals. Anyway... I'm going completely off the fucking subject. The money should go directly to the charity if he wants to raise more money for, for Alzheimer's and uh, what's the other one? Uh, dementia said even if all of the money is still there the actions of open hand were unethical and almost certainly illegal and as unfortunate as this situation is 
it, nothing it, it's illegal oh it's illegal yeah so was everything else like crypto zoo was illegal um every other scam nft thing and crypto thing was illegal like it doesn't matter like nothing's ever going to happen with this like there's never going to be like a resolution nobody's going to go to jail nobody's going to get in trouble there's going to be no repercussions let's just move past that um just donate the fucking money get rid of your charity and just work with other charities that actually know how to deal with the money is it does need to be called out and there do need to be repercussions mm -hmm. it shouldn't need to be stated that lying about making charitable contributions in order to get money is not a good thing yeah it's no bad. matter what the context i also think there needs to be a full order of open hand by an independent third party some ordinary gamers is also doing a more thorough breakdown of the situation so if you want to learn more about how to look up the public filings of non-profits and what to look for yeah, sure. and to learn more about their legal obligations i will put a link to that in the description i will also put a link to the tax filings of open hand along with their full statements please don't let this dissuade you from donating to a good cause in the future yeah, there are plenty true. of legitimate online fundraisers that support long established reputable charities like games done quick or desert bus for hope in any case, I do encourage more of you to learn to do your own research into charities, just to ensure you know where your money is going. Or alternatively, if you do want to donate, do it directly to the organizations you wish to support. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I think that that last part is really important. And uh, if you're looking to donate money to a charity, like let's say you're donating $50 to a charity, and let's say you make $25 an hour. Well, if the difference between donating to a charity that uses 10% and 50% of the funds is like, what is that, like $30? You can figure out the best charity to donate to within probably 20 minutes by just looking it up. Because there are websites and there are a number of websites like this that will provide you a, a, a massive amount of data that will give you an idea of like what which charities are actually helpful and which ones are not helpful. No one's even talking about the interest he uh, earns on half a million dollars in 10 years, even in a shitty account. The money isn't reported on his tax form. Uh, the interest could be high or it could be low. It depends. Like there's certain checking accounts that have like basically zero interest. Uh, there are savings accounts that have higher interest. There's like government bonds that have a mediocre level of interest. Uh, I don't know. Like we cannot possibly figure that out. I think the bare minimum is just donate the money with a little bit on the top. If it's $20,000, $30,000 for inflation, fine. Just fucking donate it. Get rid of your charity. You obviously don't know how to run a charity. You've been scamming people. Are you... The, are, are, is this like a massive fucking horrible scam where you're taking people's money and spending it all? Maybe not, right? But like the one thing that is certain after watching this is this person should never run a charity again. That's all there is to it. Uh, this is a great video. Let me link you guys a video. Carl Jobs does all kinds. He's, this is the guy, if I want to find out about what's going on with Billy Mitchell, I watch this channel. Arguably never has. Needs to go for jail for scamming. The money's gone for 10 years. Everybody always wants somebody to go to jail for something. And I'm not, it's the epitome of irresponsibility. Yes, I, I'm not interested in you know a witch trial here and i'm not saying he doesn't deserve it okay like please 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 do not misattribute what i'm saying the point that i'm making here is that obviously this is very bad obviously he should explain it thoroughly obviously what he said so far is not sufficient and it doesn't do any it doesn't make anything better at all can you lie to the irs yeah but it's a really bad idea yeah it is it's a very bad idea like you, you know for example if he lied about having the cash on hand he would go to jail like 100 percent, he would go to jail so i, I think the irs i i don't know i i this is what i would do right it's like if he didn't donate the money I do hope the IRS audits them. Because to be honest, it's actually a very simple audit for the IRS to do. They say, what's the bank account the money is in? They contact the bank. The bank sends them the information. And then they look at the account and the transactions on the account, whether the account's been used for personal reasons or not. This is actually the simplest audit you can ever do. What if he paid the taxes already? 
Um, well, it doesn't really matter if he paid the taxes or not, does it? I, I don't know really why that would have anything to do with it. I find it hard to feel outraged when every other politician has something to hide. I don't really care because of the hypocrisy of the entire system just destroys my motivation to follow politics. Well, I don't think that's the right mindset to have. And, like, I'm not being, like, I'm not outraged. I don't want to, like, burn this guy to the, I'm not trying to, I, I just, this is my perspective. I think there's something that we don't understand about this that he's not telling us. And I'm not entirely ready to say, and he's not doing it because he is a scammer. I don't know that. But what I do know is that something is wrong and he should not be in charge of the money. That's all there is to it. Maybe he has dementia too. Good. Then he should, uh, if it well, not good, but um, then that's fine. Um, then uh, put somebody else in charge and that's it. Yeah, he should have other people making a decision for him. Uh, decision paralysis on where to spend the money. I understand decision paralysis. And if it took him a year to send the money, then I probably would be like, oh, you idiot. What are you doing? Right? But this is nine years. Nine years. Like, what is this? This is insane. So is he a scam through a charity? And this seems like incompetence, not a charity scam. That's the, th that's why, that's why I'm so confused is because I've heard of a lot of charity scams. I've looked into some of them. And this doesn't seem like a charity scam. But it fucking is. So what are you doing? It's like, at least if you're gonna scam people for charity, buy yourself a nice car with it. Don't just take the fucking money and do nothing. It's like you're getting all of the hate for scamming and you don't get any of the benefits. It's a literal lose-lose situation. You look like an asshole and you don't get to enjoy the money.